Terry is feeling well. It seems like there is a lot of that going around. We said that we're going to make it. Um, so we'll just do the best we can and uh, continue to move forward and uh, see what we have in store for tonight. Uh, so kind of first thing on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from last month, from March. Everybody get a chance to review them? Yes. Yeah. Anybody want to make a motion to pass? So move. Move. Second. I do second. Second. You second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Hold on. Because I said first motion that you ignored. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me. No, you didn't. All right. Um, well, cool. So I know I, I, I met with us. Uh, Let's do a great start. Based on our, yeah, we're up to the Based on when we first started to support the uh, agreement where Stephanie was nominated as kind of the uh, contact person with the CAT to help keep the meeting scheduled and planned in the agenda and so forth. Uh, we met last week. I just kind of asked her um, some of the topics that we wanted to cover tonight, asked kind of what the process was looking like as far as the use of force recommendations. She talked about how the group was meeting twice a month for a while, but now you guys are meeting every week and that you're progressing through it. Just kind of want to have some general discussion from the group um, and those who are either involved in the working group or uh, those who are choosing to do it on their own, uh, how it's going, um, what the status is, any support that we can offer as an organization, and just some, some general discussion. I thought the working group was great. It was just my first time being in there and I'm playing catch up, but it was very informative for me and allowed me to uh, see what has been done and what's being done. And, from the platform. I mean, 
questions and comments. Yeah, so I was told that there was some questions that were posed on to the Conveo, um, but I think Lieutenant Morfus, correct me if I'm wrong, those questions were provided to uh, the use of force group, and they respond back to, uh, I'm not an expert in Conveo, but I don't so please forgive me. How are, we, how are we working through the questions that they're asking on Conveo and then giving them feedback back? We posed, uh, we, uh, as the DTAC team, put that together, sent our answers back to quality assurance and posted back on to the Okay. Do you know if they've been posted back yet? No, so, they've been uh, submitted to the Yeah, the process was the chief had agreed to do the, to do the questions, yet none of the people here have the access to do the, the, the feedback entry. So um, that was something that was kind of a gap in the to work it out, we had 70 pool, our 70 pool, um, the questions the report, put it into a spreadsheet, DTAP is going to fill that in. Um, the questions that came back have to be, uh, we're going to be vetting one more spot, and then they were going to be there back in by, by Stephanie. So it's a weird process, but yes, going forward, we're going to have to figure out if each group is going to be a different um, SME to, to give the, the answers to. Something we're going to have to work on, right? and that's probably the easiest way to do it is, is to funnel it through one administrator, but it is going to take a little bit. Do you have a rough estimate as to when the responses to the question are going to be posted back for them to view? You don't have to have an exact estimate. You no, know, most of them were, um, are almost, I mean, 90% of them are done. It's just a matter of, uh, there, was two, there was two or three questions we had to get back to going on. And then, and that was it. So it's not like I wait on it too much. Uh, one of the things we did notice too is that, if I can, sure. uh, the, the way that we're running the reports for the questions uh, are are pretty simple. We we, but in order to ask a question, I think there's like four different categories you get when you put in your your comment. If you didn't hit question, it didn't end up on my report. So just a reminder: if you've got a question, make sure you lead it with a question. Mm -hmm. So like Jacob, I know you have. Uh, Line of share uh, uh, of the ones that I pulled. Yes, yeah, so pay, pay for it there. Um, and so you know, we were able to answer you your stuff. Uh, it's, it's some of it was very simple, some of it's got some, some very very short responses. But for some of them, there's, you notice, know, like 100 and some odd comments to it. And unless someone sits down and reads every single comment that doesn't have a category listed on it, I can't run a report for question. So as we go forward, that's just for your guys' exactly. Like, we just need to be able to know so that we can pull the report what's questioned, what's common, etc. And I think some of that more um, is going to be either play later with some of the stuff we're working on with them. But the four categories, um, one of them is for a question. If that the, the four categories of those here are suggestion, question, answer, <coughs> resolution. Yes, yes resolution. Right. Yeah. We can only do questions and suggestions. Can we raise all of I mean, <laughs> uh, proposed resolution, I don't get, we're not asking yeah, for a lot of questions. You're saying that you have, it's only administrators who do such things. Because we can, re like, I can respond to Jacob's comments. I can make, I, because I, I logged in and I can respond to anybody's comments. So it's the baby you guys just don't have, because <laughs> we can. And that's what I love about today. Oh, is we, can, we can see what everybody else does and we can respond. Man, I have to, maybe I have to resist that. I'm not sure. So you have to be logged. You have to. If I don't log in, I can't. Yeah. I would have to onboard a new group of people every time we have a presentation policy or what else is going to be presented to you. So that's why I was saying, like, to me, it's easier to run a report, give it to the people, have them do it by committee or whatever else we did, and then have it back to you. But yes, if, if there is something we can answer right away, I'm hoping, like, I mean, I could physically do. There was one in there from Jacob that said, "What's CIRB stand for?" And that was an easy one. I just pulled them aside and I said, I can answer that. Um, it's great what's in for you. And, and so like, there's ones that are logging through. There's other ones that are not. Um, so as we work through that process, I'm not sure. We might change it. We might be able to change it. There might be things that we have somebody with knowledge to do. But yeah, I apologize for the interruption. That was, no, the, that was the, I asked you the questions. So yeah. Okay. And so when we get those responses, what we'll do is we will all notify the group or uh, Captain Holcomb notifies the group to let you know that the answers to the questions have been posted for, for you to be able to get the moving forward.
that's how it's done. Still working with the same goes to the So um, as soon as that happens, we will let you guys know. Um, so about halfway through, um, and I'm sorry, but the chief's not here, but as we continue to work, um, please feel free to ask if you need any support, if there's any uh, holding you up, if there's any technical support, you need specific, um, you want to um, not just move fast for the sake of speed, that's not what we're trying to do at all, but we also know that um, your time is value, ours is value, and we want to be efficient, and might just to other things. And we want to get these policies approved and implemented so we can start to train to them, and, uh, and oversight and all those things that come with it. So, uh, I appreciate all the work that the Chief does and other organizations do um, in its entirety. Um, any questions for the Defensive Tactics team or why you're here that maybe not really close one of those questions that is burning on your heart that will help you um, to understand a concept or an idea or something circulating around the use of force um, before we kind of move on to the next thing? Sure. Uh, we had a question when we were just talking about the uh, de-escalation section, and there was a bunch of bullet points. This, like the following de-escalation tactics um, should be implemented, or something like that. Um, and we got to talk, and it seems like that was likely contained in a training manual or a textbook or, or something like that. Um, and it, we need to find a specific section to put some more meat on the phone for this question. But, um, it would be helpful to have some kind of an understanding of where does, do those tactics come from? Is that something that we should consider adding or taking away from? Or are these terms of art that just mean something from you know, a certain chapter of post training or something along those lines? Let me see if I can find a specific section that might help. Okay. <coughs> um, do you, I think I know what the area you're talking about. In the use of force policy, there's a whole chapter or section on de-escalation tactics and techniques, and they're bullet pointed a whole bunch of different things that an officer can do to try and de-escalate the situation and, and uh, reduce the intensity and, and uh, prevent the need to use of force. A lot of those things are pulled from, uh, we, we referenced the post de escalation manual a lot in our provision of the policy. And our current de escalation training model is through the Force Science Realistic De Escalation uh, course. So some of it's pulled from there as well. Uh, I know, like, I don't want to jump ahead and, and get into the, 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 the responses that we're going to give you because those are going to come in a formal matter later. But, like, for example, one of the things was mentioning a couple of the different uh, techniques that are used or listed there uh, that didn't appear to be. Escalation. Some of it was like gathering information, uh, verifying uh, information prior to contact. And I guess that could use a little bit more context as to how that would de escalate the situation. But like part of what an officer will do or a supervisor will do is before responding to certain calls, they will slow down, park around the corner or at a park or something like that, and they'll start to gather intel and information because they could use that information whenever they're trying to. Uh, communicate with the person, they can get phone numbers, or they can contact the person over the phone before they even have to make contact with them. Uh, they can check for prior contacts with the person, see if they have tendencies to act out in certain situations, see if there's another uh, resource available to them, like family members or something that we can try and reach out to as well. So that all comes from verifying that information, which is technically a form of de-escalation. It's one step in a large picture of de-escalation, uh, the whole incident. but. Those are some of the things that we will do is verify information and, and gather intelligence to de-escalate before even getting to, getting to a scene or getting to a call. Uh, but some of that does come from those two resources, is the post de-escalation manual and the force science re realistic de-escalation uh, uh, training that we put on. Okay, that was helpful. Um, so it doesn't sound like it's just a, a list of people's anecdotal experiences or something, but it's actually from some resource that um, informs this policy in the first place. There, uh, it, it's a combination. I mean, there's, uh, the policy was formed through resources, through laws that we plugged into it, like the PCA 35A, as well as from uh, just our, our stipulated judgment and from personal experiences and knowledge from, from officers that have helped develop the policy. 
and you were thinking of the the right or the same section I was. Um, so so just mentioned there was three hundred point three point one de-escalation tactics and techniques, and then yes, there's this list of uh, techniques that were in there. So we are techniques. Okay, thank you. As far as as time goes, what is um, I'll just ask what would like to comment on this. A realistic timeline um, based off of your experience in working through this policy as to when it would be realistic to receive recommendations on um, the general use of force policy. Did you guys go over a framework? What did, what is the 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 STB consulting did? Didn't it go over the timeline and all that? Or maybe anybody? Yeah, are we going to talk about that in a little bit? That will be next on the agenda. On the agenda. Oh, because you okay. have this timeline. So there, there is a, a suggested a timeline. timeline in that. And a couple of you have, have read it and responded. So that will be a conversation that will come up shortly. I think this is odd because we're in the middle of this one, right? <laughs> and to me, this, of course, is a long one, right? It's probably the longest thing. So I think we really do need more time. And we put a lot and lot and lot of time into it. So, uh, Not having like, we have to end this day. But I don't know, because if we have, let's say we met once a week, you think, uh, but unfortunately, Rose is out on medical leave, and I'm just going to try to meet, but it's a little more complicated. Um, <coughs> by four, maybe five, at least five more weeks, let's say, and that's going to have four weeks. Because we're going to have you know, I don't know what to do, actually. And what do you mean by, I guess my other question is, what do you mean by recommendations? Thinking like we can't. I mean, we would just give you these things, and then we're waiting to hear back from you on it before we. Well, yeah, and, and, and when, when we get to the next item on the agenda, we'll probably talk about a more formal structure. But kind of like just like we deal with with the canine, is we have a date that was set for it. We, we'd like all recommendations that you want to make for the canine policy to us, and those are the recommendations. And then we have, as an organization, will review those recommendations and provide a response back over the following meeting as to what the, one, acknowledge we received the recommendations and two, our response back to the CAP as to how we process each one of those recommendations and all the some feedback on it as to um, our view on it and uh, implementation of those types yeah, of things. Yeah, I remember that meeting. Because there were only, only Anna and I made recommendations. No one was using anything in those days. So Anna and I, and, that, and that, I think Kathy King was the one who answered. Yes. And then we, we discussed. And that was really nice. But I think it's just like action of the dialogue we can't do. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the acoustic, so I think I'm talking pretty loud. <laughs> uh, that's what you might put in there. So I would say that I remember the Conveo one because only there were only five of us, five people who made comments on it. Two were the community members, and uh, and Ted King who did a really nice thing in the meeting where he told us what our um, we read our comment and told us what it was, and and then Stephanie asked for extra time because she wasn't able to come, and then she did her, there's a whole new conveyor thing okay, that Stephanie did, which has lots of red underlining on it, and, but there were only, a uh, half of that, or only four, I mean, three of us did. So, but it was nice, because it was better, I mean, it's not gonna be that few of comments now. <laughs> but I would just say the dialogue was nice, that we actually got to have dialogue with ATV in the meeting, and you're saying that would happen again. Absolutely, yeah, we anticipate with every policy recommendation and Every policy where recommendations are made, we will respond back to you as to our recommendations, our review of them, our analysis of them, um, and provide you a response as to um, what we think about the recommendations and how they align with um, what we plan to do with those types of things. So that will happen with every policy. One of the things that um, S3 is working on that they'll propose here the momentarily, at least have some discussion about it, is a formal process to track recommendations and then to provide feedback so we can be sure that one recommendation is not getting missed and that uh, everything's a, we're accountable to the recommendations and should be able to kind of explain that. But yes, that there will be a presentation at the end um, to say exactly um, what our view, our stance, and that we reviewed them all and um, that they were responsive as well for every policy. Uh, I kind of feel like Camille has a lot of positives, but I think
organic or as normal as a conversation. It's kind of like having a text message conversation with somebody. Whereas here we have we have conversations either amongst ourselves or with you. I think it uh, it, it turns out to be a much better dialogue because we have that um, we're having a conversation. And so like right now, even if we put stuff in Conveo, we have questions that we're not yet <clears throat> provided answers to. So how can we accomplish it until we get the answers to it? And so all of those variables impact a deadline sure. determination. And so I think, you know, some of the things like when we meet together here, like maybe that that's a way where we assess conveyos, you know. When we meet together, it should, I don't know, kind of more of a conversation type thing. Like, the, the work we put into Conveo um, should be recognized by the department and then needs to be back given, and then that would be more of a, is that, is that yeah, I mean? yeah. yeah, and I would think what you're saying, too, is that some of the being slow is not our side. Our yeah. side is waiting for the answers to our questions. That's, yeah, that's so not just that we're like, I mean, it's up to us to decide the deadline. And I understand that, that they've made the comments, but they're not, we're not prepared with the responses yet. So kind of how that, how those responses can dictate how, you know, it could totally change. Yeah, let's remove that. Or it could pursue something even more meaningful. For sure. Yeah, I think every, every, every question that you have throughout the policy review requires a response from us so you can get the information that you need to give them and to make a final recommendation or whatever you view based off the information you're given. And, and we have some culpability in that too. And one of the things that we were working on, as you heard Captain Olden say, we want to make that turnaround process a lot more expedient and make these things pretty smooth. I understand and recognize too that it's difficult when you're talking with a fairly large group of people and schedules are hectic, some people miss meetings, totally understand that. And illnesses and so forth. We're trying to develop a process and a guide where we continue to kind of move on in the, in the direction so that the, the product doesn't get stagnant and we have a good momentum going forward. <coughs> and, and we own some of that too, for sure. Now, I'm not, and I'm hopefully not taking this as, you're going too slow and we need to hurry up. That's, that's not what this is. And we do want to make sure we get it right for, for everybody's sake. Um, I think co collaboration, collaboration, coming up with systems and processes um, will help us do that, which is one of the reasons why I think uh, Adia and Grant came up with a system that they feel could help alleviate some of the some of that and create the information flow and the turnaround time to happen a lot faster. Because I feel like me when I send an email, generally I want to respond to fairly quickly. And the longer they wait, the harder it is. You know, you know, <laughs> um, but generally speaking, yeah, we want to be responsive, and uh, so that's one of the reasons why we're trying to create systems and processes. We want to be organized and fluid and capture everything that we need to capture so that we can respond appropriately as well, too. Um, so I hear what you're saying, absolutely. And, and, and I think where the chief stands uh, is we don't want to just move through this for the sake of moving through it, too. But how do we, when we enter, when we come and face barriers, how do we continue to move past them to, to work towards the end goal? Um, I mean, I think Conveo is a good tool, but I think it has Where it's kind of 
putting your comment out there and just waiting until somebody else chimes in or gives you a response, whether it's BP or other CAP members on the discussion. So I guess maybe the, the question is this, as a group, do we want to finish with the working group and then come together and go through all of it together and then submit some collection of recommendations from the CAP as a whole? Are we happy with just the working group tackling it and you know, we can chime in where we want to? What do we want to submit it as a CAP? And then from that, we can figure out what the BDP ought to expect from us getting it done. That was too much. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> You're trying to do it. I'd be interested in that. I think a lot of these answers will come in our next discussion. I think a lot of the questions that you have can be answered by the DMS3. Oh, okay. Um, well, then I, you know, I, I've good. just hesitated on bringing it up because I know it's the next thing in the agenda, and I don't want to have that conversation now and then have it again in, in the interest of time. But the, the system that was proposed, the framework, I think provides the opportunities that okay. you guys are talking about and looking for. Um, and it organizes our comments because, I mean, to be honest, when I counted them, there were about over 120 comments or suggestions. <clears throat> and I know you've made more since then, so we're probably pushing 150 or, or so. And for me to try and follow all that, right. as I read through it, it's not going to happen. So there has to be a system that organizes and puts it all together uh, of some type. And I think S3 has at least come up with the, the beginning of a framework that we can work with. Would you guys be okay then if we just kind of... I have one, one question first. We can hold off on it. Well, I'm moving with your question real quick and then we'll have yeah. a DM well, speak to the next question. Last time said that if we have specific questions, we could talk to somebody maybe. Could somebody answer some of those questions? There's a, there is a Zoom option to join virtually? Yes, yes. So I had asked a couple of CAP members if they wanted a BPD representative to log into the Zoom, and that, that wasn't desired at the time. Oh, is no, that we something don't want, that? We don't want to be there all the time, no. <laughs> Sorry. But, but, I mean, but, but it would be great. It would be kind of, like we could say for the last How do we know? <laughs> 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 you know, no. But I'm just saying, I mean, it's crazy to offer. I mean, it's wonderful. Because it would be great if we could we, we work and then at the last 15 minutes or whenever, you know, we have to figure that out. But then it would be like we would be there. And we were, so we would say, so we would get the answer for us to answer right that day. So we, we would love to make ourselves available if maybe like the next day or at some point. Yeah, yeah. It, it would be easier for us if it was a scheduled time and not just like we're waiting for a phone call or something and then log on. Right. But if there was a scheduled time where you want a BPD employee uh, available, then we would be open. All right, we're good. That's, that's and even, even beyond that, if you don't want them available, if you come up with some questions that can, you need a quick response on that isn't that robust, um, you can email them, you can communicate. I'm Sergeant Bishop, I'm sure we can get some answers in a quick turnaround so you have the information that you need to then be proactive and do the work that needs to be done. Um, and I think you, our availability, um, all you have to do is ask. And, and yeah, I think you said that. Like, <laughs> yeah, John is in the, the CAP email group that gets sent out. He's included in there. My email is still the same, but I can forward it to whoever needs to be forwarded to. But uh, anything you use force related to our Bishop, he's, he's with the team project and uh, I'm more happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. <coughs> Do you want to start with questions or would you guys like me to, to go through that? Um, Can you provide an overview 
It's yeah. about 16 pages long, but yes. it's very thorough, detailed, and okay. may have some follow-up questions. So, based upon you know our several meetings, coming to several meetings, getting to the PD, I think I got a pretty good understanding of what some of the challenges were. And um, basically, the thought process is behind this is one to create some process to how we are uh, one presenting, reviewing, uh, making recommendations and the response from the VP to kind of create a foundation for how we do that, but also be able to provide more time in this meeting to have more collaboration and can also facilitate collaboration outside of this meeting. Um, I know we have the working group um, and I know we do some presentations and things like that here, but thinking of it in a kind of operational mindset, I think there's some ways that we can be more efficient, make sure that more information is available to the group, um, but again, facilitate that collaboration between BPD and the CAP. So um, there's more constructive uh, review and recommendation of the, the policy. So um, kind of first things first, uh, talking about the timeline. So here <coughs> in the um, framework, it's a, a, an ideal perfect timeline, right? Every policy is going to have different requirements. Uh, like you said, use force is a big animal. It's going to take a lot more than maybe, you know, handcuff policy may take. So obviously we have to make adjustments for each uh, policy as they come out. But ideally kind of looking at a uh, four month uh, turnaround. Ideally, uh, let's say we were uh, going to present a new policy, that policy would be released, no presentation this month. Next month we would have the formal um, presentation of that information from BPD. So now you guys have had a month to review. Uh, that would come with a policy guide that essentially has like a roadmap that has a layman's overview of the policy, um, the areas of the strategic, um, not strategic, uh, stipulated judgment that need to be addressed, where BPD has addressed them, and any supporting documentation. So if they have any case studies, if they have any data, if they have any presenters. So essentially, the CAP has an entire month to be able to reformulate if CAP wants to uh, provide presentations or presenters, they need additional information. We're coming into that review meeting with information um, when the BPD uh, presents that. The second half of that meeting would be essentially time to discuss. Caps have month to review, we have the formal presentation, now we have an hour of collaboration time to be able to discuss and start that second month of review. After that second month of review, uh, if needed, um, we would have a collaboration Zoom meeting that would be set up, essentially the working group, but it would just be an open Zoom meeting that would be recorded. Those recordings would be posted so that all CAP members have access. Any additional presentations I recommend, and I have in here, it's a recommendation, that those presentations also be done via Zoom and recorded. Everyone can't make it to this meeting, as we can see, this is a pretty light meeting in terms of uh, attendance. But if that's recorded via Zoom, anyone can go in and see that presenter, see what's happened in, in the work group, and be able to come to the next meeting and, and still have that information. Again, all to facilitate more collaboration time in this meeting. There's only two hours a month. So if we're really wanting that time to meet together in person, we have to, one, front load a lot of information, but also be able to facilitate more outside of that meeting, knowing that schedules are a challenge. By recording Zooms, it allows everyone to still have access to their information. So those are my recommendations here. Um, moving forward, I do have, I think it's on, um, Page eight it starts to kind of talking about recommendations. And again, kind of a formal, uh, formal, somewhat of a framework. This is my recommendation. If I have any supporting documentations or anecdotal information I want to provide, um, that that all be submitted. Not looking for a consensus. Everyone can submit, every member can submit their own recommendation. If people want to submit recommendations together, by all means. But I think it's important to open it up so that all members have the ability to submit their recommendations how they submit. You guys all represent a different face of the community, therefore have, I believe, the right to submit recommendations how you submit. So some like working together, some don't. Uh, may that, does that mean you may have, you know, tons of recommendations? Yes, but if they're coming in kind of a similar format, it makes it uh, manageable for BPD to respond to. Uh, one thing I heard in one of these meetings, and I can't remember who said it, is, hey, you know, we're, we get some responses on some things, but not on the others, and this, we feel like we got kind of a response, we got a full response, and you know how we present our recommendations to the BPD 
also will determine the quality of the response that we get. So if we have some sort of formula to that, it ensures that the BPD is hitting every recommendation that's made and they're addressing each recommendation the same. Uh, the challenge with the Mbeo is we have some that are red lines, we have some that are comments, some that are questions. Everybody is doing things in different formats. Therefore, it's really hard to put the same amount of energy and effort and understanding into every single comment. So that's why here we, I have some details on what's a recommendation, how we can um, submit that. I also believe that those red lines and markups in Conveo are important and believe that they should still be included as supporting documentation. I wouldn't necessarily count them as a formal recommendation, but that whole policy, for example, that um, uh, the ACLU Stephanie provided should be attached. That should be there for reference. I don't think any of those comments or questions should not be included um, along with those recommendations as a formal report. It's just very challenging to get a clear and concise response from BPD if we have tons and tons of markups and there isn't some sort of organized um, report going to them. So it kind of talks about that. S3 would be the group uh, compiling that information. That information once compiled will go back out to the CAP members to be able to prove that your recommendations as you sent them in have been represented properly. I haven't mistranslated anything. It is represented as you wanted it to be represented. And then that report would go to BPD. BPD would then review and respond and create a similar template for them to ensure that each, each recommendation has been addressed. All supporting the documentation has been reviewed and it's been addressed. So basically that's, that's the, the quick and dirty of this. I can go into more detail. Um, but again, a good solid framework uh, helps us to facilitate the collaboration. If we don't have a, a, a standard, whatever that may be, it makes it really hard to do some of that collaboration and we're constantly trying to figure out how to create that standard. Uh, this is my fourth meeting and every meeting we kind of come back to, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? So I know that this may not be perfect, but my recommendation means let's try it on a policy and then if we say, man, this is just no good, let's, we need to rip it apart and start over again. I'm totally fine with that. But I think starting from some sort of foundation, having a baseline will help us refine this to come up with a procedure, a policy that works, that also facilitates the collaboration, discussion that you guys are looking to have. Questions? So you're
ties it in with that. Okay, but I have a recommendation. I just think that we should put, it's several of us said last time, we should have the escalation closer to the beginning of the thing. That's my recommendation, and that's what I think other people's recommendation. So I would just write that down, and, and, and we would just copy it and send it to it. That's what you would do. But I guess I still don't understand what you, what you would do. So I would be compiling the recommendations. Essentially, we would set a date. By this date, we want to submit our report to EP. And the group would, individual members or as a group, if you, a working group has come together and you want to submit your recommendations together, great. I'll take those and compile one report of all the members' recommendations, and then the VPD can respond. But you wouldn't change them. You would just copy No, them. I would copy and paste. And that's <coughs> why there's a format. So essentially, we kind of follow this format. I'm just dropping and compiling. I'm going to give it a number. So those don't want their name attached to that, it doesn't have to be. Um, but you'll know what your recommendations are, what those numbers are, and then that's what gets uh, submitted to you. You said that this process would facilitate collaboration in mm -hmm. these meetings. How? Because we would be eliminating some of the presentation and allowing more time in these meetings for discussion. I'm essentially saying an hour should be for any presentations and business, the second half should be for collaboration. That's what I'm trying to facilitate. Because right now, we really, I've only seen one meeting where we've had actual discussion time. I've seen a meeting where about 75% uh, of it has been a presentation. Um, I believe that those would be best done via Zoom. They can be recorded, people can watch them on time. Because those that weren't here didn't get that information. So I think if we utilize Zoom and recordings of Zoom, one, it, it ensures that information that happens in those working groups are available to everyone, whether they're able to attend or not. But it also frees up that second half of the meeting, so then we can have more discussion time, and hopefully more discussion time with CAP and BPD together. That's really, I think, important, um, is that we have more of those types of discussions with PD, BPD and the group while we're all here. And the concept ensures that we're not trying to drive the evaluation in one mindset. If we would say you have to have a consensus before BPT would evaluate the recommendation, then that would eliminate a number of different ideas potentially. Whereas if there's consensus that three people hold very strongly and it comes in and three people want to be attached to that, that's fine. But the fact that there may be seven other people who want a different perspective evaluated by the BPD in looking at that policy, then that's available. I think that is what the meaning of collaboration is. It's not that we find a strong voice in the room to rally everybody around a concept and then we are going to try to convince BPD this is what they need to do. Any other questions? I'm still trying to think of the format. Mm -hmm. So I have a simple recommendation. It should be moved. And then you have a bunch of you have to say why and stop. We don't do that in most the different kinds of things. I don't think it's documentation why. No, you don't. Uh, you don't have to do any, you don't have to get because to the number. No, it, it is. Yeah, because that's what I'm trying to request. Yeah, so if you, if you have that, then by all means, please provide it. Yeah, but, so it's definitely have it. Yes, but if you just have a recommendation that, you know, I don't know, I don't like XYZ and I would like this to be removed from your policy, and that's it. You don't have any additional information, you don't have to provide it. But if you do have it, if, it's, if we follow a similar format, that means that I can take that and our report has the same structure, and therefore still gets the same response. So no, there's no expectation that every recommendation has to have supporting documentation or attachments or anything like that. But if you do, I would, the format helps us kind of standardize that report again, so we have a, uh, an equal response and, and attention from BPD in their response report. Can I add something to that, Kathleen? So, like moving the escalation up higher, for the reason why, me personally, I would like to know, this is because I feel like being higher in the policy shows its importance. Yeah, yeah, I would say something that I could do yeah. that. Yeah, I didn't mean that, but I meant like they have a long, like, like legal, like some of them is like shake up and take over lawyers can, they have lots of commitments that they want to do. But if I just said that because I feel like it's, it's so important that I think it should be again, and that would be sufficient. I wouldn't have to like, like, I mean, I am, I'm an educator, so I could do all the other, but I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't think that. And, and for just uh, to be clear, so it just says recommendation details, stating your 
recommendation, rationale, the necessity for the recommendation, and then an impact statement and or supporting documentation. So if applicable, list and attach any relevant supporting documents, study data. If applicable, both briefly discuss potential impact of each recommendation on police operations and community relations. So it is pretty open. I, I, there's no expectation there. I'm just giving some sort of guidelines, some sort of information to help people formulate that. And we do it online, right? Huh? We can do it online. Yeah, uh, this is intended just to be done via email. I, would send, I even have a copy of like the confirmation email, how I would sign um, a reference number. Uh, just trying to be as transparent as possible, and that's the point too. I, I don't, I want to be able to copy and paste your recommendations into a report. I don't want to have to uh, interpret, interpretation means it, things can get confusing. So um, again, you don't, there's no requirement that you have to attach or do anything provide the recommendation. <coughs> Obviously, the more the better, but. And the concept was that we're not going to try to stifle the communication from you. But if it's not a recommendation, then um, it may not be seen the same way. But the supporting information can still be presented, even though it's not a recommendation. That's sort of like some of the comments overall observations that are made on conveyor. But now you have them either attached to a recommendation or not a recommendation, but just a observation. Can you make the form <coughs> available as an electronic form or maybe like a spreadsheet if we just plug it in directly here? Sure, person? absolutely. I can I can create this in an actual form system as well. I, there's a lot of that, but I guess first things first is we have to agree that this is how we want to move forward. And then my goal is to make this as easy as possible for you guys to utilize. So absolutely. Question. Mm -hmm. This came up from Rosa. She's not here, so I'm hoping I get this. I don't have any mail. Mm -hmm. I don't have any spreadsheet. I don't know any about forms. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not taking forms, so I'm not really like good at some of these things. Can I call you, or can we have a set of time with you so that I can dictate my? Absolutely. Thank you. Just clarification, so I understand as well, that when you catalog all of the comments, I mean, they're going to be by policy number. So when you print them out and we'll discuss it, whether it's up on the screen or in hard copy, we'll be able to march through the policy and look at the section. Well, there, you know, we've got three suggestions or recommendations on this aspect of the policy, and then we'd be able to just move through in our conversations, it'll help us be more organized in our conversation instead of depending on Jacob to look at his computer and kind of bring us through it. It'll give us that organization to uh, more efficiently have those conversations. Um, then the other thing was, and we haven't touched on the big picture yet as far as uh, stacking the policies and introducing. We, we just kind of did the first step, but. I think that would be good to get the bigger picture too. Yes, um, it, it seems to me, and I may be missing a lot here, but it seems to me that we're duplicating the conveyor process. Uh, it sounds like you want the recommendations or questions in a separate email. You want recommendations in a separate email. So I view Conveyo as a collaboration tool. Um, again, it's very really difficult because everyone's questions, comments, red lines are in different formats. So for example, uh, Robert um, brought up the, um, I think it's the canine policy, there were somewhere around 500 different markups so on, di on different documents. You have to understand there were four different red line documents. So when you look at comments, you look at red lines, you look at questions, that is really difficult to address every single one of those and give them the same amount. So I don't think Camille should be eliminated as a collaboration tool. I think being able to ask the questions, have the markups, everyone be able to see is really important. And I believe that those uh, Conveo documents should be attached to every recommendation report. I do not think that they should go away. But I do feel that a specific recommendation should be highlighted and submitted as a recommendation. This is my formal recommendation. I want a 
um, de-escalation to have a priority in this uh, policy. I want it moved up to the main document. I want it addressed in every section, right? That's a formal recommendation. When we're just lining things out, we're making comments, and, and you have the active discussion among the people reviewing, it's kind of hard to say, yep, that's exactly what needs to be done, and this is what they want to see. So at the end of all of that, I, I'm saying that the members should be able to distill, these are my formal recommendations after our review, <coughs> and submit that on this report. That's what we're going to do. We're going to submit those formal recommendations, but none of the conveyo comments or markups are going away. That's all going to be attached to that report as supporting documentation. I think it's important that it's there because if they need to reference that the discussion that's happening, they have that information that will be able to. Okay, so we make our recommendations on Kumail in terms of a group collaboration, mm -hmm. and then we we redo those in an email. Yes. Now, if you if, if you are making your recommendation on Kumail, I wouldn't say everyone's making a recommendation on Kumail. Okay. So some are, not everybody is. So how do we copy out sections in the policy? Uh, because you can't copy anything on conveyor, at least I can. Uh, so how do we, if we, if we want to work with a section of the policy, how do we copy that and put it in an email? So one thing that I've seen folks do is they reference the section number and then the paragraph within that sentence, and that's kind of like, it's, you know, uh, section two, paragraph three, and then they write the recommendation based upon that, because then they can go back and reference that section, rather than copying out the whole section. That's what I would write, and that's what I've seen done in, in some of the use of force recommendations. Uh, not use of force, <coughs> can I, but can so I would write recommendation, thank you. One of the points I would have for you, do you have any concerns that your recommendations might not be considered by BPD, and this whole process goes through, and in the uh, end, you feel like you weren't hurt because there, we went through, you went through a lot of stuff, we weren't con convinced that they understood what your recommendation was. Could that be a concern one would have working with a committee like this sure. over a couple years? But if you knew that your recommendation was numbered, it was identified. If it was not if it was not dealt with by the DPD, you would be able to point out to the chief that recommendation, whatever, whatever, in terms of its numerical point, was not spoken to. The chief would now have the ability to respond to it. If you want to have, hold the community's voice up to the uh, police department, this may be a way that you can ensure that you were heard. <clears throat> and that's what the chief wanted. He did not want to go through this month after month and then find out that back in January of 2004, 24, Dan Smith's recommendation was never considered. And Dan Smith found on the table at uh, the council meeting why BPD won't listen to it. Hopefully we can eradicate that. And I don't think that's your real intent to try to catch the BPD not doing something. The BPD is not trying to slide something past you so that you can't be heard. And if we can deal with this from that perspective, that we do want to ensure that our voices are heard, and we want to hear how the BPD is going to respond, then we'll be able to use this framework. And, and I think I made it pretty clear in my emails. I hope I did. The chief reiterated numerous times in our meeting that he, he didn't want anybody's comments set aside. He wanted to make sure that everybody's comments were, no matter how big, how small, or whatever. And this system, I think, will ensure as much as can be ensured that they're cataloged, they're, they're marked, they've been responded to, and like you said, may not agree with what the response is, but will know it's been addressed and recognized and we can move forward. So 
So I think I have a maybe a follow-up question then. If the recommendations get cataloged and then transmitted to APD, I think I'm following that. But there was also the comment about in this group, we could I think this was Bob's idea that we could have like, all right, let's tackle section seventeen. Uh, there's three comments. Let's talk about those real quick. It doesn't sound like we would have access to that in this group prior to submitting our formal recommendations to the PD, right? So or do, we is can there kind of two things happening? So what, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile all of that and then that report is going to go back out to all of you to say, yes, my recommendations that I submitted were, um, were represented, right? So before it goes to BPD, once the compiled report is done, it all gets pushed out to you guys to say, yep, you got my one, two, three, four, five recommendations. They're there as I submitted them. I'm being properly recommend, uh, represented. So if at that point you guys want to have a Zoom meeting or some other meeting to be able to discuss among yourselves, it's up to you guys. We can facilitate that. I can set up the Zoom meeting. Or, I mean, you guys can do it on your own time. But that report is going to go back out to all of you before we submit. So you will have the time to be able to, to do that. So again, this isn't necessarily perfect. If we want to refine this process and add in that additional time for you guys to meet as a group, we can do that. That's fine. Re does the report, when it have the actual recommendation, it'll have the printed recommendation, not yes. the number. So we have the rum so number. like there are five people who may have the section. Yes. Can, you can see all five recommendations. You're going to see the whole report is going to get so pushed out to the whole group. Okay. And how do before you, I thought of what this had been happening. So if you go, I think it's on, let me see, on page 14, it essentially has the reference number, the recommendation, the rationale, and impact. So you're just going to have multiple of these. So you, when that report gets pushed back out, you just find your recommendation number, say, yep, my stuff's there, but you'll be able to see everyone's recommendation. It just has to be Yes. Well, they won't know that it's you. They'll just no, see. They'll know somebody's. I don't yep. They'll be able to see. Yes. Not just the. And then same thing with all the supporting documentation. So whether you guys ask for it or not, I'm going to pull everything off of come fail and I'm going to put it in supporting documentation. You guys will be able to see the entire report as it's going to be submitted. And what you're reviewing is that your recommendation is re represented properly as you submitted it. And then once everyone says, yep, you got my recommendation, then that's what I'm going to submit to BPD. But if you want to add in an extra step of you guys meeting together or you want time to be able to discuss among yourselves, Chuck, you have a question or a comment? I have two questions. The first one is uh, around the, the, the need for anonymity. I think you kind of explained it. Um, and then I'd love to know how you're thinking about like, the weight um, of the different like, uh, of the different recommendations. I can imagine a scenario in which this report is submitted to the Texas Police Department, and let's say I'm sitting. And they pick and choose the ones that are like, oh, we really like these recommendations, but these other recommendations clearly came from, uh, I don't know, Kathy. <laughs> and that sort of, what is, what's the sort of uh, mechanism that prevents us from picking and choosing on the back end, right? Because we can't see what you all are doing. Okay? Again, assuming I'm saying. Um, and the other question is, is there, is it, yeah, how you all are thinking to wait, like, uh, seven people, like three people versus two people signing on to a one, a one particular recommendation. Are those weighted the same way? Um, do they get submitted to, does that make sense? Yeah, so, I mean, we aren't going to weigh anything. You submit a recommendation, it gets put on the report. Now what we may do is uh, put things in order by section, or let's say we have seven members all say they want de-escalation as a priority. You might kind of say these are all de-escalation related comments. We might organize them. But if someone submits a formal recommendation to us, it's going to get put on the report, therefore be responded to by BPD in the same way. Right. So, I'm not asking you necessarily uh, whether you all are adding weight, but whether whether you all are trying to, in this mechanism, eliminate weight. Yes. OK. Yeah. Every, I mean, every individual member I, I should have the right to submit the recommendation. Sure. So uh, again, we each represent a different facet of this community. Therefore, you should be able to submit your recommendation that you submit. Now, but if five facets of, of the community are saying one particular thing, mm -hmm. it's going to be weighted exactly the same as 
to one particular member. If so. they decide to submit one recommendation. So if five CAP members decide, I want to submit a de-escalation recommendation, they want to submit one recommendation for the five of them, then that's one recommendation. So what if each of them submit the exact same recommendation five times? Then I'll say five members submitted this recommendation five times and put them together in an area, and they each all get their same, a different recommendation. Right. So, I mean, I, I, yeah, I guess that would show some weight, as in five people make the same recommendation. So the mechanism is to eliminate, yes. is to eliminate weight. So, also. Um, at least partially, that, that's what I was trying to establish. But another, another thing to consider there is the supporting documentation that you guys submitted is whatever you want. So sure. let's say there is one recommendation submitted, but we decide to submit a letter that states that these several members, five members participated in this recommendation. I think you could still have weight added to it in that sense, if that's how you decide that you want to submit it. So okay. I think there's enough, I, I tried to make this so that there's enough room to be able to provide the anecdotal, the data, the supporting documentation that US CAP members feel is necessary to uh, communicate your recommendation on why that's important. So there isn't any hard and fast, like you can only submit, you know, scholarly articles. If, if, that, if that's a letter coming from the group like I've seen um, on the canine policy, so yes, it, it's all about how you guys want to present the information. At the end of the day, if you want to make sure that every recommendation gets the same amount of attention, the same analysis, and the same response. So I guess, yes, you can kind of wait, but the, the, the goal is just to make sure that each recommendation gets the same amount of attention, regardless of how it is. Okay. That, 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 that explains. Okay. What I was going to say is that if everybody came up with a similar <coughs> process for your five people, that would point something out to BPD that this is a community concern, not an isolated incident. But their response is going to be back in terms of how do they take care of the community. The policy was developed on that. And if you're consistently pointing out areas that show that it doesn't appear that you're caring about community, that would be an opportunity for them to deal with that. So whether it's one or five people with a similar concept, that's still going to go to the people who can make the decisions. So I have a question for you. Maybe I missed the meeting another day. What's your exactly role? Your mediation? or you have uh, some for software, so why we can send them directly to VPD, but we send it to you? Just maybe I missed the meeting. I don't know exactly what's your role. So we are your project managers facilitators. So we're here to help streamline that process and facilitate the collaboration as well as the process of review and recommendation and response. You're, you're still going to give us a recommendation? So. We are giving you, well, no, I mean, we're not giving you recommendations. We're just here to we're just here to facilitate the process. Oh, yes. We're a conduit oh. between you and the BBD and the BBD and you. I mean, we're not an advocate for anything other than collaboration. We're just collecting kind of information and just providing the BBD and you sorting the things. What is like Josh's suggestion about multiple groups were in support of a particular comment. Is there any reason not to include something like that? Once we have the reports, like if you could just do a plus one, you know, yeah, we can, Facebook yeah, black for sure. I, I, if, um, I guess these are some of the fine details of the process that we can work out, but if, you know, a group of five people submits the recommendations together, I can say this was submitted by a group of five. Or, again, like I said, some sort of supporting documentation letter can go on to that stating that you know these recommendations all came from a group. So absolutely I think we can be able to address that within the I think too I think too when we have our conversations, those five people or three people or whoever, that'll come up in the conversation as well. Yeah, we're, take, take we're all example, part of that. I have got whatever it was, a hundred and some odd uh, suggestions. Those work all mine. <laughs> work um, from you know working group. I tried to right. kind of transpose them in, and that might might be a situation where somebody's somebody else's comment was placed there by me. Um, 
even if I agreed with that comment, mm -hmm. that might be a scenario where I kind of want to indicate that this is a collaborative sure. recommendation. Okay. Yeah, and I think that would come out with this setup. I think we'll have more collaboration time, not less. Yeah. And I think in those conversations, as we talk to the group, I think that will come out. And then BPD will be part of those conversations. T had a habit when she was making verification information. Oh, thank you, Jim. Oh, she's going to hit me. <laughs> That's why I said That's why you always sit next to me. That's right. No, first of all, I want to say thank you. Uh, the organization is solid. I've been on project management, so I think the time that you put through on this policy framework, I, I read very thoroughly, it's very inclusive of everyone's recommendation. It doesn't matter if you're a group collaborating or an individual, the transparency is also clear as well. So that's why you, there's, they are the, you do it between, if I give it to Ryan, I may question, like, I was ratting you out, you didn't want to get that recommendation. <laughs> so therefore, that transparency is very clean. I say, let's give it a shot. Let's see how it works. And if you know, like anything, if we have to course correct, we need course correct, but we need something. And what you've demonstrated, I have not heard from anyone yet, really find any ground reason to dispute us not moving forward with this. So I know we're talking, we're still talking 45 minutes later, but at some point we've got to close. Um, so I'm going to put myself out there and say full support. I would love to give this a try. I think it's inclusive of everyone sitting in this room, everyone's participating. I love the Zoom ideas to make sure everyone gets the information. I love the confirmation, identifying the recommendations. Everything about it is solid, and I appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I'm sure. It's not available, but at the end of the process, once we uh, finish the, the use of force policy, we submit back to you all with comments, recommendations. Who or how will the citizens be made on those recommendations? So, um, so, so for, uh, like in this case with use of force, there's a use of force working group. Uh, like Sergeant Bishop and Lieutenant Morpheus are two of the members. So they'll go back and review the recommendations and then wind up meeting uh, with their chain of command and saying uh, we can't accept this one for this reason, or we are accepting part of this one, or, or you know whatever the decision is, they'll they'll work with their chain of command to let them know why we are or are not accepting something, and then uh, there's a document that will address the results. We'll get feedback on that. Yeah, so that'll come in person also. So somebody from the group will come back and report. For this recommendation, this was the decision that was made. <clears throat> and I know you, you gentlemen, you haven't had a chance to see that, but what we'll do is, yeah, like Josh said, provide an explanation as to what we accepted and why, and we agree with it, and it shouldn't be changed. Um, if we disagree with it, a valid explanation and a legal conclusion if there is one as to why we don't think it, it, it applies. Um, it's important and trying to edit this process makes that more transparent as well. And having that, those specific recommendations by number gives us the ability I think, to be much more organized in how we present that information back to you guys in a way that is understandable, trackable, and transparent. Uh, Maybe we just move on with the vote or something. I have one last question about this. Um, when you have a meeting with the board, it's not like you have a working group meeting, you'll be ready for it. Uh, rather than have the board be reporting in the mail now, but why would we want to do that? Yeah, I mean, once we have like consensus and chief's good, everyone's good, absolutely. I can I can make it available in multiple formats. I can have a form. I can have a PDF. I can have it however you want to have it. Any further comments or questions? Anybody adamantly opposed? We need a motion. I'll make a motion that we move forward with the collaboration framework. Second. All in favor? Tisha was the second. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the <laughs> first. You got that. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? First vote. Aye. 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 What I will do, because I do think there's some ability to this, because we are missing several members. 
um, who have had a chance to voice their concern or comments or, or get this clarification that I think provided some context as to why we're doing it, what we're doing, and the intent behind it, is we will get this uploaded tomorrow. Um, we'll reach out to those who did make it today and have them review the meeting so they can see and hear the information. And if there needs to be a further discussion, um, specifics to maybe questions that we'll ask, then we can, uh, I can set up a meeting with them and deal with them personally so that they have all the information that they need to tell. But I think we have a forum and I think a motion to move forward. Good. 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 But when we find out, how will we receive whatever these resources are, the forms or the... Do you have a Same thing uh, um, with the Zoom meetings, so it'll be a home for them, a place to go, um, all the information, have the forms, have the documents, and again, um, I can also make sure that if someone wants to use the paper form, I have paper forms available at each meeting, however, whatever is necessary. <coughs> for any of it, like, well, like I said, I, I do recommend that we move from a working group and just have, I think I gave it a fancy collaboration name, so we have a standing Zoom meeting, meeting each week for members to come and participate. Again, that that meeting is recorded, so those members who aren't able to participate in it, I would run it as your facilitator. Oh, so I, I, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> well, I, I, the I details are I, I didn't hear that the this yeah, the details aren't in here, but I mean, if, if you guys don't want to do that, you don't have to do it. But I, I think that one thing is the working group, working group is great, yeah, but, but I think that the members who aren't yeah. able to participate would really find value in the discussions that you're having. Yeah, but they would be recorded and then posted on that site, so then if you weren't able to attend the working group, you could still be part of the discussion. Same thing with presenters. So we would do those via Zoom. It would be recorded so then everyone has the same information that they can go back and refer to continue. The nice thing about Zoom, we can record, we can have transcripts, things like that, so that information is accessible. Now, if Jake and I both agree on this, it must be a fabulous idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We agree a lot. <laughs> it's a great idea. So, still some details to work out as we move forward. I know it's, it's again, it's a framework. I mean, we'll have to really in on some of these things and there's going to be some trial and error everything is not going to be perfect the moment we do it but hopefully we can continue to work together to, to make this a good process in the short term we were doing these working groups on thursday or thirty years some like that time some don't uh but because rosa was out the the uh zoom invite and you know, go out and so on in, so in the very, very short term, like this week, next week, would you guys be hosting that, or should we continue to do that? We can. Ready to roll? If you would like us to do that, we absolutely can. I think you should talk to the program. I mean, out, but Stephanie will be back. I think we need to wait for the run. We're get the end of it. Yeah. So it'll be kind of like, oh, you're, 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 I'm going to over. I mean, it's not going to feel good. I don't think the group is over what she's trying to say. No, but what I mean is people don't know that they don't have a chance. Thank you, Tabitha. <laughs> I think what she's trying to say is that having her as a facilitator creates kind of a neutrality between the conversations. And so I know you're saying that we need to go back to Stephanie and Rosa, um, and they are part of the group. There are two of the many that are here, but um, yeah, yeah, go back to your Stephanie. Well, Stephanie was in charge of the half people, you know, arranging those kind of things. She was a facilitator. She was, a, she was a, yeah. a elected. So I'm just saying, I'm not, I don't know. They don't care at all. But I'm just saying it's a little, it's sort of like, you know, if you're, you're in a group and somebody says, oh, we decided to end your group and then do another. I mean, I'm not against what there's no one else. Well, I'm not against it. It's just like, it's very much a no. Yeah, I think it's a good thing to say that. Yeah, no, no. It, it, I mean, if you guys want to continue that group, by all means, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you what to do. Uh, but what I am recommending is that this group open to everyone to continue that collaborative discussion. Mm -hmm. 
um, is important. That isn't necessarily a working group, it's just the CAP continued collaboration discussion. And that can be held at this time, and those um, meetings will be posted so that information is available to everyone. If you would like to continue your working group, then that's your working group. But I'm happy to set up that other Zoom um, whenever you guys are ready to set it up. I'm happy to facilitate that. Um, so. I think the main point is if you guys can record it, she can record it, or if you can record it and submit it to her, she can post it and make it available to everybody who can't make the meeting. Because I haven't been able to make a meeting yet, but I would love to be able to go to a Zoom recording and you know work through the meeting with you guys, even though I would mean, just be doing it by myself. So if you can record it and give it to her until like, I don't know what you want. I'm not I don't really know. I'm just saying for me it's like we could, all, we could all be part of it. Is that a limitation on the Zoom license? Like when you can I'm not that familiar with it. It may be on, you know, like I know like BPD's Zoom doesn't allow uh, recording, but ours does. So we have our own Zoom, so um, there's no issue with that. And we can provide a transcript and a summary and all of that. So you were saying that would, that would not be, it would be, you would pick a time, or you'd be asked this word, you'd be done, or you'd be Google or something. How do you do that? That's why you get paid to take off. Yeah, we probably do. I think it's like a Google poll, and whatever date and time has the highest number you can pick, but that's the beauty about recording it. You can't make it because you can to watch it when you have time. So I think that creates a little greater level of flexibility for everybody. The way I envision this, with hopefully tomorrow getting that with today's meeting out to the folks who are not here, will help get them up to speed. Then, as we start to incorporate the information that we and them were talking about into the use of force policy, I think that will help us get a better understanding of what we expect as a potential recommendation today. As it starts to kind of get a little bit closer to that, and um, as we start to work through this process, because that's kind of how I envision it to be somewhat organic. Um, that's why that's why I will intend to do tomorrow for the folks who are not here. And um, any other questions as we go to the topics covered this afternoon? Just comment. Good meeting. Last month was a good meeting. Mm -hmm. Good meeting. Moving forward. Yep. Just making things better. Moving forward. I appreciate that. We I, again. I, we've said this from the beginning. Your time is valuable. Our time is valuable. We all have lives, and we appreciate everybody's time to want to be here and you're active and you're trying to make things better. Um, so for that, we say thank you. And I think we're moving in the right direction to be organized and strategic and articulate and transparent in the work that we're doing. And hopefully, I think we can get it there. So I appreciate everybody's uh, willing to stick through it with us and if we're growing and getting better, uh, it's not lost um, with the chief or the assistant chief or anybody else in the organization. So thank you all very much. There's nothing else. Are, are you support teams so the members are here? If you want to stick around, if you have a question, you want to talk to them, I say feel free. Um, stick around as long as you want. Um, You're excuse us? What's that? The word excuse? I'm not yet in a, in a minute. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 um, sorry. Already had her feet. Yeah. So if, there, if there's another, no other Indeed. points of comment or questions, um, anything? I still do on that last point. So if I'm not mistaken, we were meeting at 4.30 Thursday, right? Which was, uh, I mean, yeah, that was exactly because it worked for some people. So if the goal is to figure out when is our next working group meeting, and it's Tuesday now. We can't meet this Thursday unless we set it up right now. Right. That's and I, Rose is gone. That's part of the problem. So, so she's gone. Is there, is there any hope at reaching a quick consensus on the meetings and that they can set it up for this week and we'll do the harder stuff as we go? Or Are you ready to do Thursdays? Yeah. But you don't want Thursday. <laughs> she, she can't do Thursday. Tuesday. Anytime. Tuesday. 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 Tuesdays are good because that's where we already so meet. So maybe like two weeks after or Wednesday. So if we even do, Wednesday. What if we did 
5.30 next Tuesday. I like that suggestion. We're already meeting. We're already meeting. Tuesday. Yeah. So if we so were to set something up Tuesday, next, a week from today, Tuesday, 5.30, mm -hmm. is that, anybody have strong opinions that it's a garbage time? Let's do that. I think by then, the group who were on here should build like that information. Okay. So you guys can send up, set it up and send out a everybody? I'll call it temporary until you guys have all your additional discussions. Cool. Anything else before our team runs out of here? <laughs> I got you for 25 more minutes, team. 25 more minutes. <laughs> Again, thank you all. Meeting adjourned.